MJ Hobby Corner here. Welcome to my studio. And uh, in this video, I just want to show uh, my Starship creation techniques. I know I've had people ask me a, a couple of questions about this technique. And uh, I'm currently using two. There is a foam technique that I've been using for some time now, uh, for quite some time now actually. And then my tin technique that it, that is something relatively new clothes pins and tin to create these starships um, but uh, and I did have videos on my foam technique but I couldn't really find them at the time so I figured I'm just gonna redo a video with upgraded uh, you know uh, some of the ideas that I, I use that I employ when making these ships okay so uh, without further ado let's go to the crafting bench and check it out Okay, so uh, let's talk a little bit about making foam starships. So uh, these are the uh, materials. First and foremost, before we do anything, talk about some of the materials and tools that I use. Uh, for materials, I have a floral wire, which is about 26 gauge. It's very thin. The higher the number on the gauge, the thinner the wire. I also have 18 gauge. Okay, and then there's a 20 gauge over here, which is a little thinner. Now, I uh, the different wires, uh, I sometimes use, say, the uh, 18 gauge more than the other one. I don't really use this one, depending on the project. Uh, but my floral wire, that's definitely used in most of the projects. You'll see how. Um, sticks, uh, this is a barbecue stick, so this is the thicker one. And then I have, like, these little cocktail toothpicks right uh, and I use these extensively and uh, these are for connecting the whole pieces plus it reinforces the uh, foam it, it acts as a skeleton you'll see that in a minute uh, some kind of measuring tool very important um, my files I use these cuticle files I find that these are a lot better on foam they, they they're not as rough Okay, and then as for adhesives, I use mostly hot glue, mostly hot glue for these projects. But I also use tacky glue from time to time, and on a few occasions, contact cement. It is important to say that contact cement will melt some kinds of foam. So if the pieces are very small, I won't use that uh, particular adhesive. Most of this is done with hot glue. Okay, uh, my pencil for scoring and adding details, and then I use this cuticle scissor. Uh, these I got at a, like a pharmacy section of one of the major stores, like Walmart, or whatever. These are like cuticle scissors, they're very, very good because of the bent, uh, you know, blade that really helps a lot in many cases. And of course, my sacto knife, knife, this is my primary cutter. Now, to cut wood, I also use my wire cutter which cuts the sticks very very easily okay, okay so now that I'm I have all my tools and everything ready I gotta decide on a ship design and usually I have a design in mind before I even start this uh, of course some people prefer to sketch things you can sketch things on graph paper whatever it is uh, I usually have something in my head before I start now there's two things I have to decide one is am I building a capital ship or is this a smaller vessel I usually work with fleets so I have some kind of in my mind some kind of plan for a faction and so I will design a fleet for that faction so I may start with capital ships because it's just the easiest for me and I already have a size that I kind of in my mind have agreed that this is the typical size for a heavy capital ship such as a battleship or or you know a heavy battle cruiser something like that right so once I've decided all that then I have to decide another thing based on the des design of the ship is it gonna be a uh, profile dominant or is it gonna be top-down dominant so what does that mean when it, when I go like this 
notice the profile. If I start drawing on my phone like this, right, just the profile, I, it's possible that I could design the ship that way and kind of build up the, the uh, sides, but that's not very practical. So for this kind of design, it's a top-down. So basically on my foam, I draw the pieces top-down, right? With the exception of this thing here, which is the engine piece or whatever, these side pieces, right? Uh, if I want this to be a thinner piece, then basically I draw the profile of it and, you know, just use the thickness of the foam uh, for the piece, right? So that's pretty much it. So I've decided that I want to do this ship. Well, I draw it top down. That's how all my pieces go. But if I decide that I want to add something to this faction and notice how it has like this weird kind of, you know, uh, bow to it. So I go and I design something with a similar weir weird bow so that it fits in with the faction. And then I draw it in profile. Not top down, but profile. Because if you look at this, a lot of the sections here are very thin. So I go with a profile section and then add to this little by little and give it the sort of, you know, fill it in, so to speak. So the important thing is once I have all that decided, I kind of plan out, here's how the toothpick is going to fit, okay, and there's going to be a space here, which I will decide, and that's going to be part of the ship, right? So, and then I will decide if I do two, two toothpicks, you know, I maybe could add wire in, in addition to the toothpick, whatever it is that I design little by little as I add to the ship. Okay, so uh, very important. I use recycled foam. These are produce trays, right? And I cut the edges and make a sheet, make sheets. And that's what I use to make my ships. But you can use any kind of foam. There's a lot of different kinds of foam. A subscriber has sent me a bunch of foam here. Bunch of foam bits, which are excellent for these starships, right? So uh, I will also add those pieces to my hull but I like recycling things that's my method that's my style so a lot of my builds uh, basically recycle material all right so I'm gonna work with this one for just a little bit just to show you guys the different steps in uh, making these little Starcraft okay so I, I cut my bits and I use my sacto knife you got to make sure this is really really sharp so of course you have to be very careful uh, use your you know common sense and safety whenever cutting uh, with those tools so uh, I have my foam pieces all cut out and this is gonna be basically the ship plan this this is what it is right here now this will change as I add stuff to it and uh, this will be the engine piece Notice that I also carved one side already with the pencil, all the details. I will add to this, and on the other side, I'll have another pattern. You know, it doesn't have to be identical from side to side. I mean, these are starships, so, you know, there's no aerodynamics to keep in mind, nothing like that, right? Uh, unless we're saying these are planetary orbital assault ships or something that do have to enter a planet's orbit. Um, but... Anyway, so these are the pieces that I decided. Now, let's say I want to make this piece thicker. And uh, let me get... Um, okay. So this is about 5 millimeters thick. Okay. Right? Uh, that's the thickness here. Let's say I want to make it a little thicker. Right, because this is the engine cowling, the engine piece. So uh, what I do uh, whenever I need stuff duplicate is I use my first one as a template. I usually trace it, but sometimes, very few times, very rarely, will I cut directly. Because sometimes you will cut into the template accidentally, and I don't want to do that. So what I, the safest bet is to use this as a template. Really angle my pencil. Put it up against that edge and trace it. 
all right and so if i want three of these pieces that's you know i will uh, cut the other one and then again use this as, as a template and that's how i cut it now in order to be sure because you're always going to get this piece a little bit bigger it's not always exactly the same once i cut it i put these pieces together and then whatever discrepancies in size i file away okay make sure both pieces are as even as they can be okay so that's just a little trick that i've used for years Okay, not too bad. Uh, I still have to file a little bit, straighten up some edges, uh, but not too bad. And I'm going to probably add a third piece to this just to make it uh, wider. Okay, so uh, there it is. There's one part of the ship and we're going to go to the next step very soon. Okay, so now I have to start putting some pieces together. Now, keep in mind that if you have... A piece of foam that is already of the desired thickness you can omit the step it doesn't have to happen this way okay I'm doing it because I'm using my recycled pieces and so I made three copies of, of one and then I'm gonna unite them now so I take my middle piece and the bow is gonna be this way so I got to decide where my bow is gonna be and then I just puncture very slowly um, this step is very tricky because you can um, damage the foam. So I generally go very slowly and I go until it gives me a resistance. I don't necessarily have to go the entire way. I could see where the toothpick is here. And for me, that's enough, right? Just make sure it's straight, but that's enough, okay? Okay, so this is the part that becomes a little random. I put together my engine pieces, okay? And uh, now I start deciding on details. So I'm gonna take my second piece of the hull. You see I inserted a, uh, this is the 18 gauge wire. I cut a piece about two inches in length. So it goes into the engine piece and then uh, it has this piece sticking out. Now I usually cut a point into my wire so that it inserts quite easily into the foam. And I'm just gonna do this. Now remember, um, scoring, I'm gonna go back and score details into this later. So it doesn't matter that the details are in, in this way it doesn't really matter I'm gonna rescore this anyway and I press it into my fuselage skeleton there that that toothpick all right so that's the midsection we're gonna continue to work on that but the next big step is the front section actually this goes like this right this faction has strange ships so I think I'm gonna do another half for this one so that's what I'll do now okay so uh, this is where I get a little arbitrary with things uh, you know this whole how this piece is cemented is you know it depends on uh, what I like to see in the model you know so that's kind of uh, uh, open to everyone's individual opinion all right so now what i'm going to do is just insert a little bit of this pink foam to give it a little girth there on the side okay so i have to make sure this is glued all right okay so this is what i have so far and you can see i'm building up some of that top down uh girth that you see in, in some of the other ships, right? And these things have moving turrets, by the way. These little turrets move. And that's not hard to do. I do that with uh, needles, actually. All right, needles are perfect for this kind of work. I also use the needles as extra reinforcement. There is a needle that goes in here into this piece of foam and it just reinforces everything. So by doing this kind of crisscrossing of wires and sticks, it gives me a lattice work. 
inside the foam that reinforces it. It's, it's kind of like an armature. It's basically an armature. As I'm building the ship, I'm building the armature. So it's building the uh, ship from the armature out. Okay, so I've decided that it was going to be like this, not outward, the way I had it. And I have a glue in on my needle, and I'm just going to penetrate that foam. And that's kind of like a, uh, you know, like a nail, basically. All right, and I make sure it goes through the other side. I can actually leave this as an antenna. Okay, and that's, I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut a little bit more foam and cap that end. Okay, and so I inserted a second needle in there and it goes right through to the other side. And there you can see that the bridge is starting to have some thickness to it. And I will continue to do this with foam and wire until I'm satisfied, basically. This is a more arbitrary kind of thing. Now, to cover these uh, joining lines, I will add another piece of foam up there. And little by little, this thing starts to take shape and to take, uh, you know, to thicken up. So this is definitely going to be a capital ship. This is a large vessel. Okay, and so now what I'm doing is adding random little blocks of foam, you know, wherever I, I like, you know, wherever, wherever I think it's going to uh, enhance the shape and strengthen the model, okay? So I'm going to put a piece right here. And again, this is all arbitrary. It really depends on the builder's taste. And I'm going to cut this foam a little bit here. Right? Uh, this is all, like, arbitrary now. And then I just um, file this a little bit. Okay? So it's starting to give me my girth, my shape. Uh, it's a very odd shaped uh, vessel, and that's okay. So I'm going to add some stuff here to kind of finish that. And then, uh, you know. Okay, so I added more pieces, and I'm using my recycled foam as well as my pink foam that my subscriber sent me. And notice how I just randomly uh, sometimes place my pieces vertically, otherwise uh, sometimes horizontally, you know, change the way the pieces are glued and change the shapes a little bit. And you start to get an interesting kind of complex superstructure. And uh, later we're going to score all this with a pencil and that adds more to the illusion of a superstructure, right? So, uh, that's pretty much all I do. And then the next steps are pretty, very random. You know, just keep adding until I am satisfied. And then, of course, uh, for the engine bits, I sometimes use um, wooden beads. These come in all different shapes and sizes. And I, I do use this with my uh, foam starships to make engine uh, nozzles and things like that. And they work very well. I, I really do like I'll, I'll, these beads. I will use the round parts, right? And, and modify the engine bit if I have to. Uh, but use the round parts in the back to kind of represent nozzles. And that's it, you know, that's basically the thing. Now, all of this has to go on a base. And I use my cocktail sticks and just find the center line. And what I do is I just poke the uh, stick right through very carefully. Okay, because there is wire in there interfering and everything. So once it's that's done, then I can start working on my base. Now, I use these... Uh, little plastic divider things that came in uh, storage boxes that I had, okay? And um, here, here's an example of one that's painted, right? And that's how I make my flight stands, but uh, you could use anything. I mean, anything, little uh, wooden squares or round pieces of wood or heavy card. If I use cardboard as a base, then I usually put a washer on it, a metal washer to give it some, some weight. Okay. So I'm going to finish this up and
Okay, so for one of the turrets, and this is working very small, I use a, a piece of foam and score it a bit, give it a little bit of interest, and then uh, glue in these little uh, 20 gauge wire bits into the uh, piece. And usually I let this dry before I attach it, okay? But uh, basically that's one of the turrets, and I decide where on the ship I want to put it. And I'll probably put it here, right? This is just one of the um, primary turrets. Okay, so I insert my needle, which is now a nifty little handle. And uh, I add a little bit of glue only to the tip. Because remember, these turrets have to turn. And if a little bit of the glue smears on the, on the bottom there, it's okay. Eventually, by uh, constantly twisting it, it will loosen up and it'll be fine. And there it is. Okay, so it has that little thing. And uh, check to see that it doesn't come out the other side here. Um, but now I have a turret and I got to fix my little barrels there. But now this thing turns. Okay. And that's not so important in wargaming. I mean, a lot of them I just glue on. Especially if they're small secondary weapons, I just glue them on. But it's kind of nice to have the primary turrets move a little bit, you know. So I'm going to make sure that's nice and tight. Uh, and that's it. Okay. Okay, so that's basically the all the steps, the major steps for making my starships. Now, the rest of it is just adding more random bits of foam, you know, different shapes. Uh, once I'm done building everything, I could add also a extra wire. I'll show you how I crisscross the wire a little bit to give a little more detail. Then I just score everything with a pencil or a toothpick. You don't need to use a pencil. I like it because it really highlights the lines, the details. Once all that is finished, then I add a preserving medium. Now, usually I add, um, what is that, polyurethane. I'm doing something a little different now. I'm actually making a gesso recipe, which is what I used to do when I sculpted with uh, paper mache. And gesso works very well on foam. And I have a specific gesso recipe I use. I add cornstarch to flour, water, glue, and paint. However, you can omit the cornstarch and just add flour. Uh, it's been shown that that works very well on styrofoam. But I'm going to add my cornstarch because it is a thickener. And when that stuff dries with the flour and the glue, it's really, really rock hard. So that's the step that I'll add once all this is finished. And then I can just paint it as normal once I have the base and everything else. So it's not that hard. I can make two of these in a day. Let's go back for just a minute. I want to backtrack a bit. One of the things that uh, is very important whenever I'm making my factions, because I work fleet by fleet. So if I'm making this ship, right, and this is part of that green faction, whatever their name is, um, then I stick to the similar design for every ship. So this way it feels like they belong together, right? So this faction is characterized by this very odd looking bow. So, uh, so that's what I do. But there's another thing to consider is what game system will you be using your starships for? Now I have three major game systems that I'm looking at. Uh, one of them is FTL, One Page Rules, and I will be playing that maybe this week as my solo game. But there's also Horizon Wars Infinite Dark, right? And that's something that I definitely want to play. Uh, if not this week, next week, as my solo game. Infinite Dark is something I'm very interested in. Now, uh, for FTL, they classify their ships as light, medium, and heavy. And that's basically what I follow in my builds. So this is a heavy capital ship. So the next ship that I build, if I want to build a medium ship, it's going to be about half the size. And if I'm going to build a light ship, then it's going to be even smaller, right? And so uh, 
that is the example that I have in my fleets. You'll probably see that in a picture before the video ends. You'll see the different size classes. So I go by light, medium, heavy, and of course within those size classes there could be corvettes, destroyers, light frigates, light cruisers, heavy battle cruisers, battleships, whatever classification you want to add, right? But the, the main thing is that light, medium, heavy, and then I can use them in FTL. And uh, interestingly, in Infinite Dark, you can do the same thing because the command level thing uh, that Infinite Dark uses, command level one, two, and three, is basically light, medium, heavy ships. The difference is that in command level one for Infinite Dark, that, that usually represents either mechs in space or starfighters. So single seat or uh, dual seat in tandem, right? Pilots. You're, so we're talking like really light ships, starfighters, bombers, uh, maybe a shuttle, right? Something like that, but uh, drop ships, right? Smaller ships, especially starfighters. Then when you get to the medium, the command level two designation, these are larger. These can be gunboats or raider ships, right? Something that a pirate would have, not necessarily a large ship, but something small like a light frigate or a corvette, something like that. Medium, command level two, and then command level three, which is your heavy ships, are your heavy capital ships, your battle cruisers, your carriers, all that stuff. So Infinite Dark from Horizon Wars uses a very interesting classification to determine how you're going to play your games, what scale you're going to play in the battle, and what story it's going to tell, right? But it's the same thing. It's light, medium, heavy. Same thing as FTL, just that it changes things a little bit, right? There, there is a little bit of a different mechanic there. But you, I can use the same ships that I'm building for FTL for Infinite Dark, and that's kind of the point. That's what I wanted to get to, is that I'm thinking about not only my factions, my ship design, how I'm going to make it, whether it's light, medium, or heavy, but what game is it going to be used in. Full thrust is a whole other thing as well. They do use a light, medium, and heavy uh, class category, but they're a little more detailed. They do have that Corvette, you know, uh, destroyer, uh, battle cruiser. They're a little bit more detailed in terms of, of the classifications. A bit more naval-like. Okay, just like a, na uh, a modern day Navy classification for warships. So that was an important tip, and I kind of wanted to add that to the build. That covers the main steps for this. Now I'm going to be closing up the studio early, so I don't have a lot of time today. Uh, today's a holiday here in the States, and I do want to take a break and close up. But before I do that, here's, uh, here's the new techniques that I'm using. Uh, with the tin and I will get around to painting this. I haven't really painted it yet Okay, but this is a heavy frigate and a heavy battle cruiser and it involves a different technique and now I am working on a Carrier this is gonna be a star carrier. This is the skeleton and this is the result after I add all the tin and All the bits to it. It's gonna look like that Okay, and then we're going to talk about making tiny starfighters, starfighter squadrons for the carriers. All right, but that'll be a future video. And again, this is a whole other technique. This is another way of making starships. All right, but this one's a little more, I wouldn't want to say complicated. I, it's more tedious. It involves a lot more patience and uh, a little slightly different technique. Okay, but it's not hard, really. It's not. It just, it takes a lot longer to make these ships as opposed to my foam ships. Okay. All right, folks. Thank you so much again. Thank you uh, for subscribing and uh, we'll talk very soon. All right. Thank you uh, to everyone for all their support.